what would be the things that you would ask to determine if it's right for somebody? Yeah, their age, their lifestyle, their sleep. Um, and uh, um, have they done everything? You know, if they're in their, if they're 39, 38, um, can we increase it in other ways? Right. Like a nutrition, uh, resistance weight training can boost it. Um, um, you know, nutrient dense food. Uh, stress tolerance, you know, if they're overly, if their cortisol levels shot through the roof because they're stressed out all the time, that can, so taking care of all that, if it's still low, you know, then there are other things to use as well. Clomid, HCG, those other things to boost it, you know, and then, and then they may be a candidate. And if they are a candidate, then treating it the right way two times a week would be my recommendation, lower levels. And then and then rechecking in eight to 12 weeks to make sure it's appropriate. You got it dialed and, in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And start low. Don't start with the high. I mean, it's not necessary. Right. And yeah. you can always continue to right. increase the dose as needed. Yeah. Yep. So um, what fraction of your clients would you say end up on some form of hormone therapy? Of the men of in our the practice? Men. Yeah. Yeah. Our practice is generally 40 to... 60, 70, um, and I'd say of that age range of our people, probably about 70%, Okay, I would say. And and do you, I mean, I, there's obviously going to be some self-selection because of yeah. the kind of medical care you provide. You have yeah. a, a concierge practice. Right, right. Um, and I get that this is totally speculative, so we're going to frame it as this is just a guess. Mm -hmm. But in the general population in America, what fraction of men, let's just say 50 and up, would probably benefit from some low dose testosterone therapy. Now, this is going to be controversial potentially. <laughs> it's going to be, but I'm just I like I think it's it. I yeah. think look, let's just give the honest opinion. Recognize that it's speculation. But I mean, is it like I'm I, I, I'm wondering, and I've got my own opinion, not being a medical professional, but yeah. but I'm wondering, you know, is it we're talking, we're talking ten percent of men, fifty percent of men, eighty percent of men? Like, what are we talking about here? Okay, I I may regret saying this, but I would say <laughs> I would say it's on the higher range, like eighty percent. Yeah, um, you see a lot of yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's um, like I've got a guy in his early forties who is osteopenic. Would have never known it. Great guy, in pretty reasonable shape, um, and uh, you know enjoys bourbon and stuff like that, but. You know, there are some other things we need to dial in, but he's in his early 40s. He's osteopenic. And he would be one that I'd really consider we need to get us. I mean, we're, we haven't done it yet. We're trying to do all the other steps, but it's a heck of a lot easier now to manage that osteopenia now than whether he's absolutely in yeah. his 60s. So, yeah. so I, and he was shocked. It was his T, I mean, it was um, not, not T score, the Z score. Yeah. For bone density. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. bone density on the, on the deck. So, but, um, so yeah, and it's like, it's 80% or more, it needs to at least be addressed or managed, you know, whether yeah. it's with exogenous testosterone or not. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I would probably be in the same ballpark. Yeah. I think, you know, obviously there's an aging component. So mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. yeah, at least 80% of men at some point in their life mm -hmm. would benefit from hormone therapy, right? Yep. And is testosterone alone the optimal hormone therapy? Who knows? But that's something we know actually moves the needle right yeah. now. Um, and so, you know, I think the, my sort of take home is this is something every man should be paying attention to. Yeah. And I would say every man, like if, if it wasn't for the fact that we have this huge healthcare disparity where some people can't even afford basic healthcare, mm -hmm. every man in their, sometime in their forties should get the limited set of biomarkers we've talked about and know where you're at. Yeah. And yeah. there's probably, in a, and again, this is getting complicated because because a huge fraction of the American public has, you know, metabolic disease, which is mm -hmm. going to increase your risk for deficiency in testosterone and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be shocked if half the men in their forties are deficient in testosterone these days. Yeah. I'd agree with that. If not more. Which would suggest that half the men in their 40s or more are going to benefit from testosterone therapy of some mm -hmm. sort, right? So it's a big number, I think, mm -hmm. is the is the take home. And it's a tiny fraction that are actually getting 
appropriate care, right? There's some that have been scared into thinking that they shouldn't do this, or they're just being, you know, stereotypical men and not addressing the problem until it becomes yeah. such a problem. Or they're getting crappy care mm -hmm. and just being given, you know, testosterone without paying attention to the biomarkers and what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. So we need more people like you that are doing it the right way to actually, you know, help people address this in in the manner that's going to give them potentially the 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 biggest benefits with minimizing the risk. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just one big tool in toolkit, but it's yeah. one of many things. I mean, I think that's so, yeah. one of the things that I I have sort of um changed my feeling on in the last several years is, you know, when you think about the 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 levers you can pull that actually have a big impact, mm -hmm. right? We know diet exercise, not smoking, not drinking, improving your sleep quality, again, obviously tied together, sure. improving your relationships. Um, and then when we get into medications, I think hormone therapy is like one of the biggest, unless you've mm -hmm. got a disease that you need to treat mm -hmm. um, or metabolic dysfunction that's pre-disease that you can treat, hormones are, they, they, they move the needle for mm -hmm. a lot of people. So mm -hmm. that's really something that, that should be, more attention should be paid to in a responsible way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any final thoughts that you want to add? We've, we, I think we've done this topic. Good service. I hope we'll, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it really is a game changer. I hate that word, but yeah, it, uh, I can't tell you the number of people. I have one patient who came to see me, a new guy he was with his other uh, physician and he, he said he was just feeling weak and tired and wasn't sure what the deal was, wasn't getting enough rest at night, even yep. though he was um, trying to dial in all the other lifestyle factors. So he came to see us and we, you know, managed some other things. And, but this was part of what we did with him. He's, you know, he's our age, total different character. And we yeah. got it dialed in perfectly. And yep. um, yeah, I mean, I think wonderful. that's one of the things I've, I've seen. And again, you take it for what it's worth, but yeah. when you meet enough people who have had this experience where when when this is done properly, both men and women, yeah. and I've met a lot in the last couple of years, yeah. when this is done properly, it is life-changing for mm -hmm. people. Like it is completely turns around mm -hmm. their quality of life. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by this is a, I've come up to the conclusion this is a big lever that we should be pulling when, it, but it needs to be done well. Yeah. And it gets mismanaged a lot. Maybe that's the, the yeah. way to say it, so. Yeah, so just be sure and follow up check it again yep. in eight to 12 yep. weeks. That's really important. Yep. And so we'll put links to like the, the biomarkers that we talked about. Um, obviously finding a good doc is challenging, but we'll put a link to Kevin's website. So if you're in Oklahoma city, you should definitely uh, check Kevin out. He's yep. fantastic. Um, we do a lot uh, with hormones at Optispan as well. It's part mm -hmm. of our programs and there are lots of other good, good docs out there in this space, but I think finding good care and one way to be prepared for that is if you know what questions to ask. So hopefully this episode has given people the tools to be able to, to ask and know what some of the answers should be mm. when they talk to this, talk about this with their providers. 